What is up everybody? Hope you're doing well. We're going to be talking about the Luke Cage buff. Yes, indeedy, this champion has been buffed. So I've had a little bit of opportunity because he's on the CTP beta at the moment to give him a little bit of a try. This is a 6 star, rank 5, ascended and also 200 signatured. And it's an interesting change. There are some things that have kind of changed with the champion in that his indestructible is now a passive, which you're going to see in some footage in a second. There's also a improvement in his damage ramp up, uh, which at the moment is like attack rating for each debuff on the opponent. Uh, obviously scale, so the more debuffs you have on the champion, the better. There's going to be some footage with, and I think without, Mr. Fantastic's pre-fight, which can really help out to add three more debuffs onto the enemy. So the name of the game is to add as many debuffs as possible, depending on the rotation. I went through a different types of kind of rotations with it, whether or not I was going to the SP3 in order to get the trauma debuff because it's on for 30 seconds and can really uh, help out uh, as it causes all hits to deal additional 20% of the damage recently dealt as a burst of physical damage. So of course, you know, that kind of plays into it and inflict four exhaustion debuffs at each reducing critical damage. More debuffs on the champion, more damage the champion can do. On the SP2, however, you do do a concussion uh, debuff, but it consumes five personal exhaustions. You're essentially hitting your light attack over and over in order to build them, uh, which if you go to, I think it's, is it here? I'm just reading through. Yeah, uh, light attacks have a 60% chance to inflict an exhaustion debuff. Again, more debuffs on the enemy, more damage you'll do. And again, that's kind of the point in the narrative we're trying to like, you know, make here with this. And you also do a heavy attack to do a del uh, de debilitate debuff. God, I can't get words. Debilitate debuff for 12 seconds. So the more debuffs, again, we're doing that. So I'm figuring out a rotation of, and I kind of settled on, once I've got a relic and one that I'm applying a debuff on, which is the Atman one, build pass an SP2, SP2, then you do the concussion, SP1, and then the fight's done. For more longer fights, it may be a case of doing like SP3, SP2, SP1, and that's kind of like 3, 2, 1 as a rotation. Maybe, I guess this is going to be down to like you to kind of find the best way uh, possible to play uh, the champion. So without further ado, I don't want to do any more talking. I want to just roll some footage and just talk through some processes and also test out some stuff. So let's go and do that. So here we go. This is when I first started playing with the champion. I'm running Suicide Masteries at this moment in time, which isn't the best when trying to figure out a new champion. Because sometimes it really works. Sometimes it really doesn't. And as I said, the main thing for me is like just trying to like get stuff to stick. I've already done an SP3, which you can see on screen. And then I'm kind of like rushing in with an SP1, which isn't the best. Because it could be a case of building that concussion. Because you need to do the concussion to do the stun debuff. Once you do the stun debuff, then you can start being aggressive on rotation. And one thing now I'm going to point out is indestructible. You can see there, I should have taken a lot of damage. And we're going to see that in some footage in a second before I get to the point of going, look, this rotation is probably something that I'm going to end on after making maybe a load of mistakes and setup. And that was without a relic, this particular footage uh, right here. So whilst this is done, we then move on to, here we go, testing against projectiles. There are some improvements when it comes to damage incoming and avoiding when it comes to projectiles. But also at the same time, there is the added bonus of having that indestructible, which I absolutely love and can be very helpful for this particular champion. So you can see that indestructible has popped up right there, and you can see we're not taking any kind of damage, which is nice. Of course, it rotates around and whatnot, but then in this particular scenario, again, getting hit. That indestructible is fantastic. It is just really darn helpful. The same way you can see in a moment that uh, rotation-wise, this what I was, what, you know, get, it's a get out of jail free card. I keep referring to this before. Like, you are not taking any damage. It is really helpful and can really help out if you're kind of like an interceding, like, um, you know, uh, what's it called? Uh, uh, Heimdall. But of course, look, there are some interesting ones. Like, I'm going to get into Tuma right now. But here's the thing if you had to use the champion for whatever reason, you know, there's a hashtag challenge, then at least you've got that as a favorable option uh, for stuff. Here's the uh, opportune rotation that I went with, which you're going to see in this particular piece of footage. This is longer piece of footage, I can talk through it. So my process for this with the Mr. Fantastic uh, pre-fight on board is to build up to an SP SP2 close to an SP3 and fire the SP2 off. 
So once I've done that, it can be, you know, just like we can rotate in. We can, with a concussion, get the stun debuff. I'll activate the relic for another debuff. I'm throwing the SP2, which you can see there's some nice amount of damage there. And, uh, and of course, nice crits. I do there a heavy attack for a deliberate de debilitate on. And then we got the stun. Then one, two. I'm not doing a three, not chancing it. And of course, I want to come back in whilst the concussion's up to get a stun debuff on. And that is my rotation for it. That was, as I felt, one of the better ways to do it. But I'm not 100% sure if it's the only way to do it. Of course, you know, you play MCOC how you play it. But as I said, for me, I kind of felt like it was the past an SP2, close to an SP3, SP2, concussion, and then we get the activation. Because as it says on the uh, SP1, the last hit pauses all exhaustion and trauma debuffs on the opponent. If a personal concussion is active, inflict a stun debuff for 2.5 seconds. Look. I think this champion could be good in a lot of scenarios. Yes, I didn't test it in a lot of those particular scenarios that maybe I could have gone like, oh, we'll go here, we'll go there. But I guess it's going to be down to like where, where you're going and what you need to do. If a champion needs to apply debuffs in order to do damage based on some sort of like interaction, and as well if you're, you know, for some reason need heroes for hire or champions that are within some of the tags and there's going to be a Karina's challenge, then this one, including hashtag mercenary, which is annoying because I feel this could have been a very good option to help out in some content um, that's, you know, expiring, expires this week. So that's kind of where I'm at with it. If I was to kind of give you kind of any like feeling around this champion is, I think it's a good buff. I think it is going to be good. I think it's going to be helpful. I think there's going to be some decent interaction on an offensive manner. I also think that there could be a good shout for him being a helpful, helping hand in like a battlegrounds, kind of like on the front foot. But then again, you've got to have a champion that is uh, go up against a champion that's going to be receptive to taking debuffs, not something like a skill-based champion that's fielded in uh, defense for whatever reason. Because look, if they purify the debuffs, you're up uh, Poop Creek with that uh, paddle, and that is pretty, you know, annoying. There was fun, fun interaction, I, th I think you saw with the, against the the Atuma fight. But let's face it, it's not the it's not the quintessential option. You would go, hey, I know I'm going to use a disadvantaged class champion and stuff. Do I think suicide masteries matter? No. Um, double edge is probably the only thing that this kind of matters for. But if you're looking to like rotate around an SP2, SP1 type narrative, then look, don't do it because you'll need to be SP3 rotating so you don't take recoil damage um, at all. So that's something to kind of like uh, point out. The indestructible so somewhat helps, but then it applies that you would have to be rotating around going, before I throw my special attack, I need to get hit in order to get indestructible and then throw in a special attack and again it's going to be down to you as a personal preference of play if you then do that but we're getting into a fine line of that we can make a 20 minute video dissecting every little bit between using this relic and that relic in a nutshell champion does debuffs get debuffs on does damage up to your rotation i preferred a two sp2 and then an sp1 because concussion stun debuff uh, heavy attack heavy attack Nice crit damage. Could be useful in lots of areas. It's alright. Anyway, what are your thoughts? Check out some other content located on the screen. And I'll see you all in the next one. Have a lovely day. Bye-bye.